Hare Krishna devotee. We welcome you all to our midweek program. On this week, we have a very special speaker, our very own Ajita Krishna Prabhu, who will be continuing the 12 Mahajan series where we are discussing all the different Mahajans from the Bhagavatam. And this week, the personality that Prabhu will be talking on is Bhishma Dev, who is known as the grand sire of the Kuru dynasty. Uh, he's also known to be a wonderful Vaishnava, which is why he's part of the Mahajans. And Ajita Krishna Prabhu will be enlightening us on this wonderful devotee. Many of you already know about Ajita Krishna Prabhu, but just uh, let me just give a quick introduction to Prabhu. So, Prabhu is a disciple of His Holiness Gopal Krishna Goswami Maharaj and he started associating with the movement in 1981 when he was a college student. He also completed his MBA from the Dartmouth College in New Hampshire and he works as a financial professional in Delta Airlines. Prabhu also is on the managing, uh, managing board of Eskon Atlanta and also preaches in the suburbs of Atlanta, especially Peachtree City, gives classes and uh, sessions on leadership and mentoring roles, etc. And he is primarily uh, using the Bhagavad Gita to enlighten uh, many new devotees and practically apply them or practically apply the principles in our lives. So without any further ado, I will hand it over to Ajita Krishna Prabhu. <clears throat> Hare Krishna, uh, Hare Krishna Prabhu, thank you so much. Uh, all glories to Shri Prabhupada and all glories to Sri Sri Radha Madan Mohan, Gaurdhatai, Jagannath, Gaurdhev, Sudhamarayani. I think I'll, uh, I'll just uh, start with uh, the uh, invocation prayers and, uh, you know, as is the tradition, we'll just do a very quick and short, uh, well, not really a key, key but it's just uh, the recitation of the prayers. Uh, <clears throat> Jai Radha Madhav Kunj Bihari, Gopi Jan Vallabha, Girivar Dhari, Yashoda Nandan, Brajjan Ranjan, Jamna Tiraman Chari, Jai Radha Madhav Kunj Bihari. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So before we start with our uh, <clears throat> discussion on Bhishma Dev today, I uh, just wanted to thank uh, ISKCON Atlanta and all of the devotees uh, who are participating in this uh, discussion in the glorification of uh, Bhishma Dev. <clears throat> and uh, so for the pleasure of our Lordship, Shishi Radha Madan Mohan, Shishi Gornitai, Shishi Jagannath, Baladev, Spadarmarani, and based on the uh, purports and instructions of Srila Prabhupada, we try to glorify uh, one of the greatest Mahajans, one of the greatest devotees uh, that has ever set foot on this planet, Bhishma Dev. Sorry, I was trying to get my setting right. So, <clears throat> Om Agyan Timurandasya Gyanandana Shalakya Chakshur Unme Tamina Tasmai Shri Guruve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutade Swam Rupa Kadamayam Dadhati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padakamanam Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sagana Ragunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvetam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam 
श्री राधा कृष्णा पदान सगणा ललिता श्री विशाखांदिधाम हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधु जगत पते गोपेशा गोपिका कांता राध कांता नमस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरंगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृष भानु सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वंच कल्पात्रुभचा कृपा सिंधु व्याये वचा पति तनाम पावने भ्यो वैष्णवे भ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैता गदाधार श्री वासादि गौर भक्त वृंदा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो वंस अगेन फॉर प्लेजर फॉर लॉर्डशिप श्री श्री राधा मन मोहन श्री श्री कोनिताय श्री श्री जगन्नाथ बलदेव सुब्रमानी वी विल ट्राई टू फोकस आवर अटेंशन ऑन द ग्लोरिफिकेशन ऑफ श्री भीष्म देव द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड एक्चुअली फील्स प्लीज्ड when he is glorified but the lord actually feels even more pleased when his devotees are glorified so a pure devotee of the lord like bhishma dev <clears throat> when he is glorified there is immense amount of pleasure that the supreme lord gets when he hears how his devotee is being glorified and in fact as we see in the uh, past times of bhishma dev the lord himself made arrangements such that bhishma dev would be glorified <clears throat> by the plan of the supreme lord bhishma dev was glorified not only by those around him but by residents of the heavenly planets by residents of the spiritual planets and by the supreme lord himself and we'll get into uh this discussion a little more but one so so one of the things that i wanted to kind of share was that we'll start initially with just a little bit of history and some of the little bit of uh historical facts related to bhishma dev and then from then uh and and after that we'll get into the second part which is basically uh discussing the instructions of bhishma dev and why he is considered a maha a mahajan and what are some of the lessons that that we learn from from him of course there are many lessons that that we learn from bhishma dev and it's actually uh to glorify bhishma dev within the span of an hour uh is is uh obviously not possible but uh we will try to do the best that that we can and uh, i'll i'll focus on some of the uh more uh prominent aspects of bhishma dev's uh past times so when we think of bhishma dev the most uh common response that one gets in answer to the question that what do you think of when you think of bhishma dev the most common answer that we get is of this great old personality lying on a bed of arrows and that's a very unique uh very unique position i can't think of anybody else in the history uh that we histories that we've seen in our shastras etc of a personality that underwent what seemed to be so much bodily pain and at the same time was completely undisturbed by it this is a unique aspect of bhish bhishma dev and we'll get into uh this this discussion or more aspects of it as we go along so Bhishma Dev just to kind of uh, give a brief summary of who he was Bhishma Dev 
appeared on this planet <clears throat> as the son of King Shantanu and Ganga Devi. Ganga Devi, of course, the mother Ganga. So that's why he's also known as Ganga Putra. And there's a long story about why he appeared as their son. And obviously we don't, we probably won't be able to get into all of that this time. Uh, but he was the eighth son of Ganga Devi and Shantanu Maharaj. The first seven sons, as you all know in, uh, in the story uh, of the Mahabharat, that the first seven sons, Ganga Devi herself, put them in the river Ganga, seemingly drowned them in the, in the river Ganga, though that was not really the case. And <clears throat> Maharaj Shant Shantanu was under a vow that he would not question Ganga Devi uh, if in any way. He would not question her in any way, regardless of what she did. So even when she was so-called drowning her seven sons in Ganga, Shantanu Maharaj was quiet. And then the eighth son, Bhishma Dev, uh, when it came time for him to be drowned, he couldn't hold himself back. Shantanu Maharaj couldn't hold himself back. He questioned Ganga Devi why she was doing that. And part of the uh, promise that he had made to Ganga Devi was that if he ever questioned her, she would leave him and go away. And so that's really what happened. So Ganga Devi then said, okay, uh, now that You've broken the promise of questioning me. You've questioned me. You've spoken to me with harsh words. These were two conditions that we had agreed upon before we got married. Uh, so now I will leave. And so she left and she took Bhishma Dev with her. But she took him to the heavenly planets. And over there, Bhishma Dev was trained by the demigods. And because Bhishma Dev was trained by the demigods, uh, his name, he he was given the name Devavrata. So Devas, the demigods, and Vrata, one who got the benedictions from the demigods. So Devavrata was another name given to Bhish, Bhish, Bhishma Dev. And the understanding was that Ganga Devi would train him in the heavenly planets and bring him back and give him to Shantanu Maharaj. So 32 years later, uh, Shant Shantanu Maharaj was walking along the bank of the Ganga and he saw that somehow the river's flow had kind of almost stopped and it was actually flowing backwards. He was very surprised as to uh, uh, how this could happen. And soon he spotted that there was this person, young, young, young man, who had created a dam of arrows and that was blocking the uh, flow of the Ganga and so much so that with his arrows, he had actually reversed the course of the river, which is unheard of. And so Shantanu Maharaj uh, prayed to Ganga Devi, she appeared and she said, well, this is none other than our eighth son, Devavrata, and he has been trained by the demigods, etc. And here he is. And so Shantanu Maharaj was very, very happy to be reunited with his son and he took him home. And so that's one part of the past pastime. So this is how Bhishma Dev came to be known as Ganga Putra and uh, Devabrat. As the Mahabharat's Katha uh, instructs us, Shantanu Maharaj uh, over time met uh, Rani Satyavati. Satyavati Devi was the daughter of a fisherman, uh, of a fisherman, and he wanted to marry her. I'll just really condense these pastimes because these pastimes itself can can take hours. So, uh, Maharaj Shantanu wanted to marry uh, Satyavati Devi, and her father, the fisherman. Um, uh, imposed a lot of conditions. And basically, he said that you have a son, Devavrata, and he should not become the king. My daughter's son should become the king. So Shantanu Maharaj refused and he came, came back to the palace, but he was very, he was very sad, very morose. 
Bhishma Dev or Devavrata at that time understood the cause for his father's moroseness and he personally went and approached uh, the fisherman and said, you know, if you think or, or for my father's happiness, I am willing to accept your condition uh, that your daughter's son would should be the king and not myself and that's and that's fine fine with me so the fisherman was very happy but he said but you know what what if you have children you get married you have children they might uh, stake a claim to the throne so Devabrata said don't worry about that I promise you I will not ever get married and I will not ever have children so that problem that you are thinking of will never arise so uh, the fisherman was was very pleased, but he still but he had one more doubt, and he said, "Well, that's fine. That's 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 great. But what if, over time, even though you don't have children, but if you uh, were uh, to change change your mind and think of becoming a king?" what would have happened to my daughter's son at, uh, in that situation. So David Bratha said, I will satisfy all of your conditions in the following way. First of, first of all, I'll not get married. So there's no question of me having children. And as far as my claim to the throne is concerned, I give that up completely. And what I will do instead is I will make, I, 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 I promise you that I will dedicate my life to protecting the king of what was at that at that time hastinapur so i will dedicate my life to serving the king and to protecting the king instead of competing with him for the throne so with these promises the fisherman was very satisfied and he agreed to uh, let satyavati uh, get married to king Shant shantun king shantun of course was very pleased now when Bish, when Devabrata made these uh, promises to the fishermen, think about the depth of these promises. First, he said, as a Kshatriya, he said, I will not get married. Kshatriyas were known to have multiple queens and children and sons so that they could so that the uh, dynasty would continue. And the fact that Devabrata made, made this promise that he would not ever get married, not ever have children, that was kind of unheard of for a Kshatriya. Then on top of that, when he said that I will not ever uh, lay claim to the throne, that was unheard of. And the third promise that he made that I will let alone uh, not, uh, stake a claim to the throne, I will always, always support the king, protect him, help him, guide him, and be there for him. So it's not as if, like in our modern times, if due to envy, if we cannot have something, we resent if somebody else has it. And Bhishma Dev voluntarily gave up his claim to the throne and, 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 and promised that he would actually support the king. So these promises were so appreciated by the demigods that they showered flowers upon him and the heavens, from the heavens, they praised him and said, what a terrific vow he has made and said, Bhishma, Bhishma, because Bhishan, Bhishan vow, this is, this is a terrific vow. This is so hard for anybody to do. So that's how he got the name Bhishma. So Ganga Putra, Devabrat, and Bhishma. So these were the three names that he was famous uh, by. Now, over time, we'll see the relevance of each of these, uh, of, of the names for him, and especially Bhishma. So in this way, Bhishma Dev brought Satyapati uh, Mata home. King Shantanu got married to her. 
And King Shantanu was so pleased with his son and with his unheard of, unprecedented level of sacrifice that from the bottom of his heart, he wanted to make him or give him a benediction that would try to parallel or try to match the sacrifice that Bhishma Dev had made. And so King Shantanu then blessed him with the benediction of Ichha Mithu, meaning he said, Bhishma Dev, I'm so pleased with you that you can choose your time to leave this body at will. Nobody will be able to kill you. Nobody will be able to uh, force you to die. You can choose the time that you would like to leave your body. So with this, Icham, <laughs> contrast this with somebody like Hiranyakashipu, who uh, prayed and prayed and prayed for benedictions to become immortal. There was no sense of sacrifice in him. The difference between a demon, Hiranyakashipu, and a devta or a devotee like Bhishma Dev is that the benediction that was given to Bhishma Dev of Icham Mrityu, that's the kind of thing that Hiranya Kashipu was looking for. And here it came to Bhishma Dev without him even asking for it. Hiranya Kashipu spent all his energy and effort in trying to acquire it and still there were loopholes. Still there were loop loopholes because he wanted to use those benedictions and that power that he would get as a result of it for his own sense gratification, for his own uh, enjoyment. Whereas Bhishma Dev's purpose was entirely different. So Bhishma Dev got blessed with this benediction of Ichamrityu without him even asking for it. So this is a little bit of the history. And now let's move on to how Bhishma Dev used his benedictions and what was the mission of his life and what was the purpose of his life. Bhishma Dev, with these, despite these benedictions, had absolutely no tinge of selfishness in him. He's known as the most selfless personalities in the entire Mahabharata. And Bhishma Dev's mission uh, or the purpose that he was sent to this uh, planet can be understood if we think about the rest of the circumstances uh, in the context of the Mahabharata. For example, Krishna says, Yada yadai dharmasya glani bhavati bharata. So at that time, irreligion was surfacing and Krishna appeared at that time for what? Glani bhavati bharata abhyutta nama dharmasya tadatma nama shajami aham. So, uh, Krishna's purpose or Krishna's goal for appearing on the planet was basically to reestablish the principles of religion. Paritranaya sadhuna vinashaya cha dushkritam dharma samstapanarthaya sambhavami yuge yuge. So when the Lord appears to perform his pastime, so like as in this case, uh, dharma samstapanarthaya, to establish the principles of religion, the Lord doesn't do it alone. Not that he needs anybody's help to accomplish any of his missions, but he always brings his associates with him because his devotees are always looking for an opportunity to serve the Lord. And when they appear with the Lord, they serve with the Lord, there's this reciprocation that takes place between the devotee and the Supreme Lord. And the reciprocation is what it is all about. Krishna could appear and do anything that he wanted by himself, without needing anybody's help for it. But he brought, in this case, the Pandavas along with him. He brought Bhishma Dev along with him so that there could be reciprocation between them. And so Bhishma Dev stated that his mission was to ensure that the kingdom of Hastinapur would be secure in all ways, in any way, there would be no danger to the king of Hastinapur. And Bhishma Dev would always be there to guard the king 
and the safety of Hastinapur. But that was the stated purpose. But Bhishma Dev's actual mission was to serve Krishna, was to serve Krishna in Krishna's mission. Now Krishna's mission, as, we've, as we just saw, is paritranaya sadhanam vinashaya cha dushkritam dharma samstapanartha. So to establish the principles of religion, Krishna wanted to establish the Pandavas on the throne. And the Pandavas, Maharaj Yudhishthir in particular, to be the king, so that a Raja Rishi or a saintly king would rule over the world. Now, Bhishma Dev, Krishna could always have chosen Bhishma Dev to become the king of the world. But Bhishma Dev came to actually serve Krishna and assist him in his mission of establishing Maharaj Yudhishthir as the king. There was no selfishness in Bhishma Dev. He was not interested in being the king. As we've seen, I mean, he gave up any uh, desire to be the king right from the beginning because his goal was basically to assist Krishna in this mission. Now, we all know the story of the Mahabharata. The war took place. Krishna tried, many other people tried to establish peace and they tried to prevent the Kauravs from having the war. But Duryodhan, Dhritarashtra, and all those hundred sons of uh, Dhritarashtra, they were, they were committed to not sharing anything with the Pandavas. Duryodhan's statement to Krishna was that I will never give even an, the amount of land that you get from piercing a pin into the earth. Not even that much land am I prepared to give to the Pandavas without a fight. They have to fight. This war will be there and I will not uh, give them anything. This was the mentality of Duryodhana. So under these circumstances, when the war took place, we know how uh, eventually the war was won by the Pandavas and Bhishma Dev was killed or injured. Bhishma Dev basically was, uh, it was so arranged that Arjun's arrows pierced Bhishma Dev such that he was on a bed of arrows. And this was essentially, we'll, we'll come to the part where uh, we explain why this was the Lord's desire. So in order to establish or to prove the mission of the Lord, when Bhishma Dev uh, entered the battlefield, his heart was supportive of the Pandavas. But his commitment or his promise to protect the king of the of, of Hastinapur, which happened to be at that time the Kauravs, due to that commitment, he was fighting on the side of the Kauravs. Despite all of that, Bhishma Dev never lost sight of what was uh, the right thing to do at all times. Even though Bhishma Dev on the surface was on the side of the Kauravs, behind the scenes, Bhishma Dev would always chastise Dhritarashtra and Duryodhana and always advise them against the fight, always advise them to give the Pandavas their fair share. But it was Dhritarashtra and uh, Duryodhana and his sons, of course, Dhritarashtra's sons, who never agreed to this proposal. Now, one may question, why was Bhishma Dev loyal to uh, the Kauravs when he knew that they were wrong? And the reason Bhishma Dev did that was to demonstrate to the general public how they should, why they should be loyal to the king. And he demonstrated with his own example, 
he was loyal and he wanted everybody to be loyal to the king. And the logic for that is the king is actually supposed to be the representative of the Supreme Lord. And loyalty to the king, if you're loyal to the king, that means you're loyal to the representative of the Supreme Lord. And when you extrapolate that logic, it means you are basically expressing loyalty to the Supreme Lord. So that's why Bhishma Dev was always loyal. Now, the question arises, well, Bhishma Dev did know that the Kauravs are doing, doing, doing the wrong thing. So to address that, Bhishma Dev spent his entire energy chastising, instructing, guiding Dhritarashtra and Duryodhana, but they never listened to him. So that was a different matter and that kind of led to the war. So now we'll just fast forward to the part where Bhishma Dev was injured in the war. He was lying on a bed of arrows. And from that point on, the instructions of Bhishma Dev start. So in the Bhagavatam, Bhishma Dev's instructions, I mean, there's a whole chapter on the passing away of Bhishma Dev, which is, uh, which is full of great lessons for us. So when Bhishma Dev uh, was on the bed of arrows and the fighting had, had, had ended and it was time for him to go, the, we see how in the Bhagavatam it is described all the great sages of the, uh, from, from the heavenly planets, they arrived on the scene. It says Narad Muni, Vyastev, Asita, Devala, uh, Parvat Muni, all the great personalities of this planet, they arrived. And for, the, for about 30 verses in the Bhagavatam, starting from Canto 1, chapter 9, verse 11 onwards, uh, you know, there's a description of the great personalities that arrived because all of them understood uh, that the time for Bhishma Dev to leave his body was coming. And Bhishma Dev set for us an example on how to leave our bodies. His lives, the course of his life and the mission of his life and how to leave the body in order to fully achieve the mission of life is explained very nicely by Bhishma Dev through his own example. So when the Pandavas uh, headed towards Bhishma Dev, Krishna advised them that now that you won the war, go to him with splendor, go dressed as kings in great chariots, and with all the splendor that comes with a victory, they were sad. Yudhishthira Maharaj was very sad, but they agreed to what Krishna said and they reached there by Bhishma Dev's side in splendor. And this is what Bhishma Dev wanted to see. Bhishma Dev basically was around for four generations, waiting for this day to see the Pandavas uh, become the kings of Hastinapur. So when they arrived there in splendor, it brought a smile to Bhish Bhishma Dev's uh, face. He was so pleased that tears of joy started flowing from his eyes. This is what he wanted to see. This was the mission of his life. This was the purpose of his life. And this was not a selfish or a bodily relationship driven purpose that I want to see my grandson Yudhishthira become the king. There was, that wasn't the thing. Bhishma Dev's desire to see Yudhishthira as the king was Krishna's desire to see Yudhishthira as the king. That is why Bhishma Dev adopted that desire. And that's why he was very happy to see Bhishma Dev, uh, uh, Maharaj Yudhishthira as the king. But leading up to that point, Maharaj Yudhishthira was very, very, very unhappy. He was, he was feeling guilty that he had caused the death of so many 
millions of people and all the repercussions of uh, a war like this where millions of people die, so many women are widowed, so many children are orphaned and so on and so forth. Now, this is, again, this is an interesting instruction for us. Before the battle of Mahabharat started, Arjun was lamenting. Arjun was lamenting and he was saying, I don't want to fight this war, it's sinful, etc., etc." And Krishna instructed him, the Bhagavad Gita, through which he explained why Arjun should fight. Now Krishna, by his arrangement, bewildered Arjun so that the Bhagavad Gita could be spoken by the Lord to Arjun for our benefit. Now, at the end of the war, after all this fighting had taken place, Krishna bewildered Yudhishthar Maharaj. And Yudhishthar Maharaj was, was lamenting and holding himself guilty and he was saying, I am the greatest sinner for having created or for having been the cause of this battle just for my selfish interest that I may be uh, placed as the king on the throne of Hastinapur. So Krishna at the end of the war bewildered Yudhishthira Maharaj into this kind of thinking. And why did Krishna do that? He did that so that Bhishma Dev could preach to Yudhishthira Maharaj and thereby demonstrate how great a devotee Bhishma Dev was. So again, as we discussed in the beginning of the class, Krishna is more pleased when his pure devotees are, uh, are glorified than he is when he is pure, uh, than when he is glorified. <clears throat> in keeping with that desire of the Lord, Krishna bewildered Yudhishthira Maharaj after the war. And Yudhishthira Maharaj started saying the same, started voicing the same kind of lamentation that Arjun was voicing prior to the war. And so when the Pandavas arrived at Bhishma Dev's bedside, Yudhishthira Maharaj, seeing Yudhishthira Maharaj upset, Bhishma Dev started preaching to Yudhishthira Maharaj why he should not lament. And so the first thing that Bhishma Dev told, told him was that the Mahabharat was fought to counteract injustice. He said, Maharaj Yudhishthira, you are now established on the throne of Hastinapur so that there is a Raj Rishi and not a person like Dhritaraj or Duryodhan on the throne. Second, there have been so many injustices in this society. You are now placed on this throne so that you, you may justly rule the kingdom. So stop lamenting and look forward to fulfilling your duty to Krishna as a king by ruling according to the guidelines of the Shastras. And this is an important lesson for us. The lesson for us is we are all fighting our own circumstances, our own situations. That is our own, if you call microcosm of Mah Mahabharata in our lives. And the instruction that Bhishma Dev gave you this is perform your duty as the king, which is not, which is non-different from the instruction that Krishna gave Arjun, perform your duty as a Kshatriya by fighting. That is the message to us too. Perform your duty based on your condition, your circumstances in life to please the Supreme Lord. So first instruction Krishna uh, Arjun or uh, excuse me, Bhishmadev gave Maharaj Yudhishthira was that this battle was fought to counteract injustice. And if you're following the gods, the, the, the Lord's will, guided by the Brahmins, guided by the Vaishnavas, guided by the spiritual master, in our case, and upholding the principles of religion and living by the principles of religion, then you should not lament. Then you're doing the right thing. So this was... Bhishma Dev's first instruction. Then he told, uh, well, so Yudhishthira Maharaj was not convinced by this at, at, at this point. So he asked about other uh, issues. 
And he said, but we have had to suffer so many challenges because of our karma. And Yudhishthira and Bhishma Dev instructed him saying, it is not because of your karma that you have suffered. You have suffered due to the will of the Supreme Lord who has in the form of time, in the form of Kal, arranged for all of these events to transpire, for all of these injustices to transpire. One of the symbols, one of the signs of pure devotee, like Vishnu Maharaj, is that they don't consider themselves above the law of karma. And so Yudhishthir Maharaj in his humility was lamenting that one, I have performed sinful acts by fighting and two, we have suffered in the past because of our sin sinful acts. And so Bhishma Dev put those doubts to rest and said that you have suffered only due to inevitable time, the influence of time, the influence of Krishna in the form of time. These are his arrangements. Then Bhishma Dev went on to say that nobody, not even the demigods, can understand Krishna's plan. He says the greatest of demigods, Brahma, Shivji, Narad Muni, none of them can fully understand the plans of the Supreme Lord. Therefore, it is not a good use of your time to try and blame yourself for things that happen due to the will of the Supreme Lord. Moving on, Bhishma Dev said, Pandav or Maharaj Yudhishthir, please understand that during the course of the 12 years and the one year in, uh, in incognito when you all were in exile, you have always had Krishna by your side. You've had him with you before the exile. You've had him on your side while you all have been fighting the war. And you know, just as well as I know, without a doubt, that Krishna is the Supreme Lord himself. So if the Supreme Lord is by your side, why are you thinking that you're doing the wrong thing? Krishna was always guiding you. So why are you thinking that you're doing the wrong thing? Another indication of Bhishma Dev being a pure devotee of the Lord that he could recognize that here is Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. There were so many people there. They were all bewildered. Nobody, very few people, very few people actually recognized and accepted Krishna as the Supreme Personality of God, Godhead, but Bhishma Dev was one of the few who recognized Krishna as the Supreme Lord. And so he again emphasized to Yudhishthira Maharaj that you had Krishna on your side. So why are you concerned? He has guided you. He has always been by your side. So just perform your duties. And in the Bhag Bhag Bhagavatam, there is a detailed description of how uh, Yudhishthira Maharaj, how Bhishma Dev explains that Krishna is the first Narayan and so on. Then he goes on to say, that he said, now Maharaj Yudhishthir, so actually, sorry, let me back up. Yudhishthir Maharaj then asked Bhishma Dev to explain to him the duties of a king and the system of Varanashram Dharma, etc. And so the Bhagavatam describes, so in the Bhagavatam briefly touches upon this, but in the Mahabharata, there are hundreds of pages on the Shan in the Shanti Parva about all the instructions that Bhishma Dev gave Yudhishthira Maharaj at that time. And so again, when we go into the details, and obviously we, I'm, I'm just touching upon this as bullet points. The, the instructions that Bhishma Dev gave Maharaj Yudhishthira on Varnashram Dharma, on the duties of different order uh, of uh, the duties of different orders of society, the duties of a king in 
in particular, there are hundreds of pages on, on this in the, Mahama, in, the, in the Mahabharata. And he explained all of this in the presence of great personalities like Narad Muni, Vyas Dev, and others who respectfully stood there and heard Bhishma Dev's instructions to Yudhishthira Maharaj. Bhishma Dev would never have given these instructions to Yudhishthira Maharaj had he not uh, been accepted as an authority. He would have deferred the answers to Vyasadeva, for example. There were so many other personalities there who were exalted personalities. And Bhishma Dev, being a pure Vaishnava, a true Vaishnava, would have deferred the answers to someone more exalted than him. But at that time, it was evident that this is Bhishma Dev's position. This is Bhishma Dev's prerogative. This is Bhishma Dev's stature as a great devotee, as a Mahajan, to explain all of these things to Yudhishthira Maharaj. Now, as these instructions were continuing, time was passing by, and the sun reached what is called the uh, Uttararnya uh, uh, Nakshatra, or the time where it is very, very auspicious uh, for a person, for a yogi to leave their body. So when the sun entered into that Nakshatra, Bhishma Dev stopped giving his instructions. And then he said, okay, now, from this point on, I'm going to focus on Sri Krishna. And from this point on, we see how Bhishma Dev teaches us how to make our life successful by leaving our bodies in the right way. One day, each one of us will leave our bodies. Prabhupada has given us Krishna consciousness simply to teach us how to be successful in this material body, in this human form of life, by knowing the art of leaving this body such that we don't come back to this world again by the grace of the Lord. If the Lord wills, he can save us from having to come back into this world again. And Bhishma Dev will now demonstrate that principle for us. And that is why he is considered a great Mahajan, because he knew perfectly well how to make this life successful by leaving this body. One definition of success in the context of war is winning the war. But we are fighting against, we are all fighting a battle in a war against birth, death, old age, and disease, the cycle of birth, death, old age, and disease. And Bhishma Dev teaches us how to win this battle, real victory, Real victory for a human being is to exit the cycle of birth and death. And Bhishma Dev teaches us how to get this real victory. So when Uttaranya Nakshatra was uh, starting, Bhishma Dev fell quiet and he said, now I'm going to meditate upon the Supreme Lord. And Shri Krishna, was himself there. Sri Krishna personally was there in front of Bhishma Dev and Bhishma Dev said, now I'm going to just focus my attention 100% on Krishna. It's very interesting. Uh, this is in verse 22 in Bhagavatam. Um, sorry, it's actually verse... Uh, maybe 24, but anyway, the use of the word Uttarayan is used to in indicate the sun being in the northern horizon. Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur Maharaj explains a deeper meaning to that nakshatra. And he says, Bhishma Dev wanted to take advantage of Uttaranya. That can be understood as a combination of the two words, Uttara and Ayana. Like Narayana, one who gives protection 
Ayana gives protection to human beings. Nara. Uttar Ayana. Uttara. Uttara gave protection. Ayana. Or shelter. Ayana is also shelter. Shelter to Krishna. When, when Krishna entered her womb to save Parikshit Maharaj from the Brahmastra during the Mahabharata. So when Bhishma, so when Bhishma Dev wanted to take advantage of Uttarayana Nakshatra, Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur Maharaj says that Krishna, that Bhishma Dev wanted to take shelter of Krishna because Uttarayana refers to Krishna. So from this point on, Bhishma Dev started glorifying Krishna. And he said, he referred to Krishna through various names. And he said, oh Krishna, you are Nanda Nandan. You are Devki Nandan. You are Partha Sathi. You are Partha Sakhe. You are Vijaya Sakhe. He started calling him by these various names. Why did Bhishma Dev do that? Again, very prom deep instruction for us. Krishna always likes to be associated with his devotees. So when he's called Nanda Nandan or son of Nanda Maharaj, he feels happier than if you call him just Krishna. Because it symbolizes the Lord's one, that he's a person, the Lord's identity as a person, and two, the reciprocation of love between him and his devotees. So Nanda Nandan, same way, Yashoda Nandan, Vijaya Sakhi, <laughs> in the context of the Mahabharat, Krishna is referred to as Vijaya Sakhi because Vijaya is Arjun and Sakhi is friend of Ar Arjun. And same same thing as Partha Sakhi. Partha Sarthi al also as a charioteer and Partha Sakhi as friend of Partha. So Krishna likes to be associated with his devotees. And so Bhishma Dev started referring to him through all of these names. Then he also started remembering the various pastimes that Krishna had performed to reciprocate with his devotees. And so, first of all, Bhishma Dev said, my Lord, the time has come for me to leave my body, but I don't want to leave my body until I can see you face to face. And so, Krishna stood right there in front of him. Then Bhishma Dev started glorifying him. Then Bhishma Dev started calling him all of these different names. And then uh, and then when he referred to him as Partha Sarthi, uh, Bhishma Dev wanted to focus on a specific pastime of Krishna. And actually, we have about five, five minutes left. So I'm going to start uh, uh, wrapping up with some of the key takeaways from all these verses that uh, we see in the Bhagavatam. Um, <clears throat> so he said, Krishna, you are Parthasarthi, one who agrees to be even the servant of his devotee meaning Arjun. And he said, this is the form in which I want to always remember you. This is the form in which I want to remember you, especially at the time of leaving my body. And we'll see why Bhishma Dev said that this is the form in which I want to remember you always. So we know the pastime of when Krishna had to pick up the chariot wheel to come towards Bhishma Dev and char charge him very quickly. We'll just recap that because that is crucial to understanding the identity of B Bhishma Dev. During the Mahabharat, Duryodhan was upset with Bhishma Dev and he said that Bhishma Dev, you are not fighting as hard as you should be fight fighting against the uh, against the Pandavas. And Bhishma Dev was not pleased when. Duryodhan said that. So he said, okay, Duryodhan, 
tomorrow i am going to fight so hard that the pandavas will all be killed and he said i have got these five special he prepared five special arrows for the pandavas and he kept them ready for the next day now guess what krishna obviously knew what was going on so he told arjun krishna told arjun that you go to duryodhan now when duryodhan saw that uh, bhishma dev has prepared these five arrows duryodhan <laughs> had suspicion in his mind that bhishma dev will not fight uh, uh, or 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 bhishma dev may not use these arrows so he said bhishma dev i will keep these five arrows with me tonight and i will give them to you tomorrow so that you can use use them in the war bhishma dev said okay that's that that's fine so krishna obviously being the supreme lord knew that this was going going on and he reminded arjun of a promise that duryodhan had made to him duryodhan was at one point uh, while the pandavas were in uh, well i'll just cut make the story really short duryodhan was at one point on the verge of being killed by one of the kantarvas and so arjun showed up to his rescue and saved him and so duryodhan was very uh, he was resentful of the fact that arjun had saved saved him that he had to take this favor from arjun but he said you know arjun okay as a kshatriya because you saved my life i will uh, i will be happy to give you a uh, to give you something in return what is the benediction that that, that you want arjun said i don't want anything right right now but when the time is right i will come and ask ask you for it krishna reminded arjun of this and said arjun you go to duryodhan and ask him for the five arrows so arjun went to duryodhan and said you have five arrows specially prepared for us you had given me a promise at that time that you would give me what i want i have come up for these arrows duryodhan was furious but he said i have to keep up the promise here are the five arrows who told you about this and arjun said well none other than krishna you know that he is god and so duryodhan the uh, aracharya has explained that, that that was the one time that he felt that actually krishna may really be god and so he actually knelt down and prayed to krishna but it was too late so duryodhan went back to bhishma dev and he said bhishma dev those five arrows arjun has taken can you create uh, can you prepare another five arrows and bhishma dev said i cannot because all of my tapasya all of these years of my life where i've done my tapasya i had invested in these five arrows so now i cannot replicate them i cannot get another set of five five arrows but i promise you this either tomorrow i will kill arjun or i will make krishna break his promise of not fighting in the war and i'm talking about this because this we are talking about reciprocation between the lord and his devotees and that's what's important now because bhishma dev is about to leave his body and he, these are the things that he's remembering and so <clears throat> bhishma dev made this promise next day on the battlefield as we know bhishma dev fought so hard arjun was in a really bad spot he was about to be killed his chariot was stuck and there was no way that arjun could be saved and so when that happened krishna became really angry and he picked up the chariot wheel and he charged towards bhishma dev and what did bhishma dev do well we all know bhishma dev bowed down and uh, uh paid his obeisances to krishna who was charging at him with anger and at that time the sun set and the fighting stopped for the day so now coming back to where we were bhishma dev is remembering all these past times of krishna and he said krishna you are so wonderful that you always keep the promises of your devotees even though you may have to break your own promise and risk being chastised by the world or risk your own reputation in the world you don't care for your reputation but you care more for your devotee's reputation and so bhishma dev says to krishna that my lord i pray to you because i offer you my obeisances because you kept your promise to protect arjun under all circumstances even though it required you to break your own promise and tarnish your own reputation and you kept my promise to you as well because my promise was 
which I had made to Duryodhan was that either I would kill Arjun or I would make you break your promise. And so you broke your promise just to make my uh, words come true. So Dury uh, Bhishma Dev, out of his love for Krishna, expressed that pastime to him. And then Bhishma Dev started remembering. He said, Krishna, I always want to remember you as Parthasarthi. Now, Bhishma Dev was always being on the side of the Kauravas, was always facing Krishna. So Bhishma Dev saw the Parthasarthi form of Krishna in its fullest splendor, which the Pandavas didn't, because the Pandavas were always behind Krishna. The Pandavas were always behind Krishna. So they could never see him in that form that Bhishma Dev could. So Bhishma Dev now says that, my Lord, my time has come to leave my body. And how I want to think of you, and he says this word, verse, he says, Yuddhi turag rajo vidhumra vishvak kach lulita shramavadi alankritasya what that verse, this is a very instructive verse because it reveals to us, it will reveal to us Bhishma Dev's destination after he leaves his body and his relationship with Krishna. So he says, Yuddhi Turag Raja Vidhumra Vishwa. Oh Krishna, I want to think of you as Parthasarthi who Yuddhi Turag Raja Vidhumra Vishwa during the war, Yuddhi Turag is horses, Yuddhi Turag Raja Vidhumra Vishwa. Rajo is the uh, dust. Vidhumra Vishwa. Vidhumra means your hair were muddy. So during the war, during due to the dust kicked up by the hoops of the horses, your hair became muddy. This is the picture that I want to think of. Yuddhi Turag Raja Vidhumra Vishwa. Uh, <clears throat> Kach lulita shramavari alankritasya. Kach lulita, your hair. Kach is your hair. Lulita, they were scattered. And with kach uh, lulita shramavari, vidumra. Shramavari, your face, your face was decorated. Shramavari with the perspiration. Shrama is effort, and shramavari is the uh, perspiration due to the effort. So kach lulita shamara sham, kach lu. Lulita Shramavari Alankritasya. Alankritasya, that is, you were decorated. Alankritasya. Then he says, So I want to see this, uh, think of you in this form where you were decorated with the perspiration of, uh, with the beads of perspiration on your face. Then he says, Mama Nishita Sharia Vibhidyamana, and your body, Mama Nishita, my sharp arrows. Nishita is sharp. Um, uh, Mama Nishita, <clears throat> uh, Sharer arrows, sharp arrows. Mama Nishita, Vibhidya Mana. Vibhidya Mana means that you were apparently injured, apparently injured and bleeding. And so I want to think of you in this form where your hair is muddy, your face is uh, perspiring. Your golden armor is uh, pierced by my arrows and you've got wounded by it. But Twachi Vilasat Kavache, that is your armor, Kavache is our armor. Twachi Vilasat Kavache, as to Krishna Atma. Now, this Twachi Kavat, uh, Twachi Vilasat is very significant. Twachi is the Lord's skin and Vilasat means he was actually enjoying, Krishna was enjoying the touch of the arrows on his skin. And so Bhishma Dev says, Astu Krishna Atma. Krishna, this is the form in which I want to remember you when I'm leaving my body. It's 8.05, I'm going to wrap up in two, three minutes here, so please bear with me. Twachi Vilasat Kache Astu Krishna Atma. Bhishma Dev wanted to think of Krishna in this form as Parthasarthi because 
of the special relationship that Krishna has with Arjun. All of these pastimes, oh, I'm sorry, not with Arjun, with Bhishma Dev. All of these pastimes that we have discussed, meaning having gotten the benediction of uh, Ichamrityu, having gotten this name of Bhishma, where he took on this vow to support the king of Hastinapur, Bhishma Dev could have left his body whenever he wanted there was so much suffering, etc., during the course of his life when he saw the Pandavas being ill-treated, when he saw Kunti uh, and uh, being ill-treated, when he saw Draupadi being ill-treated. He, he was suffering, but he tolerated all that just to see the day when the Pandavas would be on the throne of Hastinapur. Now, when, he has, when it is time for him to leave his body, he's saying, Krishna, I want to think of you in this form as Patasati because think about it. Bhishma Dev is a servant of Krishna. He never asked Krishna. He never said to Krishna that, look, I have got Icha Mrityu. You make me the king. I'll be a Raj Rishi. I'm a devotee. I'll rule for 100 years, 200 years, 500, 1000 years if you want. And then when it's uh, when you say you leave, leave your body, I'll leave my body. There was no selfishness in him. Somebody with Icha Mrityu, if, he, if, if, if it had been Hiranyakashipu, would have proposed this to the Lord. Bhishma Dev did nothing of that sort. Bhishma Dev said, my Lord, I am your servant. Bhishma Dev is, a, is in Dasyaras, is in Dasyaras with Krishna. And Prabhupada explains, it is in the Dasyaras, but in the mood of chivalry, that they fight with each other. They fight. Because when Krishna wants to fight, wants to engage in war, he also has to fight with somebody who's off his level. And only his devotee can be at that level. So that's why Bhishma Dev recited this verse that Yuddhi Turag Rajabhidumra Vishwa Kachilulita Shamavari Alankritasya that I want to think of you, my Lord, in this form. And so Krishna appeared before him in this form and then Bhishma Dev left his body. And as Prabhupada explains, Bhishma Dev demonstrated to us that by seeing the Lord face to face, if we leave our bodies, we will go back to Godhead in chapter 8 of Bhagavad Gita verses 5 to 15. All of this is very clearly described. And Bhishma Dev is an actual example who lived that principle, who left his body in this way. And then Prabhupada describes Bhishma Dev entered one of the Vaikuntha planets where Krishna in his Parthasarthi form is the predominating deity. And so you may ask that what about the arrows that were piercing Krishna? What kind of devotional service is this? So as he says, Twachi Vilasat Kavache, Krishna, Astu Krishna Atma, Twachi Vilasat. That means Vilasat, the Lord was enjoying the arrows hitting his chest, just like the Lord enjoys it when a devotee showers flower petals upon him. When those flower petals, tulsi petals, when we bathe the deities, when there's Abhishek taking place, people are bathing the Lord with flowers and so many other substances. The Lord enjoys that. That is Tvachi Vilasat. His skin is enjoying, enjoying it as Vilas. So same way with a devotee who is in the uh, relationship of servitude and chivalry with him, like Bhishma Dev was, he enjoys the arrows. He enjoys the touch of the arrows. Now Krishna's body is spiritual. Nahanyate, nahanyamane shari. The soul is spiritual. There is no question of the soul being hurt or pierced by arrows or bleeding or being uncomfortable in any way. There is nothing of that sort. There is nothing of that sort. The touch of the arrows was non-different than flower petals being showered upon uh, Krishna by Bhishma Dev. So in this way, there was reciprocation of love between the two of them taking place. In this way, Bhishma Dev leaves his body. And he. And the thing that we need to remember is when Bhishma Dev left his body, Krishna was there in front of him. For us, that same perfection can be attained when we are chanting the holy names of the Lord. The words of Srimad Bhagavad Gita, the words of Srimad Bhagavatam, the words of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, these are all 
literary incarnations or i'm sorry not literary sound incarnations of the supreme lord so when these vibrations are around us when these vibrations are in our ears it is non different from krishna personally being present in front of us just like he was when bhishma dev was leaving his body in modern day uh, in contemporary leela just as krishna appeared in dwapara yog along with bhishma dev in contemporary era when krishna appeared as chaitanya Mah- mahaprabhu the passing away of bhishma dev is 100% similar to the passing away of haridas thakur because haridas thakur left his body in the presence of uh, chaitanya Mah- mahaprabhu chaitanya mahaprabhu holding him just like bhishma dev left his body with krishna holding him with krishna being there with him uh, and so that's how uh, bhishma dev was successful in his fight against the uh, bat- in the battle of <laughs> birth death old age and disease same way haridas thakur was was successful and these are the instructions that we get and so one last uh, piece that i want to leave you with is that bhishma dev's instructions to us are encapsulated in one verse of the uh, narar panchratra which basically explains to us the love that a devotee has for the supreme lord and it says ananya mamta vishnu mamta prema sangate bhakti riti uchchate bhishma pralad uddhav narad so bhishma dev and other mahadev like pralad uddhav narad the is a great devotee of lord not a mahanin but he is a great devotee of the lord so bhishma dev pralad maraj uddhav narad these personalities have described bhakti as what bhakti riti uchchate what have they described it as as ananya amata vishnu mamta prema sankate meaning when one thinks only of vishnu only of krishna as the object of our love then such an awakening is known as bhakti and so bhishma dev had this awakening had this bhakti had this level of love in his heart for krishna and that's why he left his body yearning for krishna to be with him and then when krishna was there with him he exercised his option so to speak of ichhamrityu and he said now the time has come for me to leave my body and he made his life successful and he gave us the instruction of how we can make our life successful uh gone over a little bit i'll stop here uh there any questions any comments questions i'm happy to take them now very krishna pro thank you very much for this wonderful session on the glories of bhishma dev his instructions both to yudhishthir maharaj and also his prayers to the lord and uh, how he is addressing the lord so thank you very much uh devotees as prabhu mentioned if you any of you have any questions you can raise your hands and we'll uh, ask your question if not uh we uh, you can also put it in the chat and we can ask the question hare krishna so we have mukta sangadas prabhu please go ahead hare krishna prabhu dhanat namal gur shila prapad hare krishna prabhu dhanat namal gur thank you very much prabhu it was wonderful informative session and so this maybe this is a repetition of the questions many people would have asked about but uh, so bhishma dev is one of the mahajans and it is also said in the scriptures mahajano yena gata supanta that we have to follow the footsteps of mahajan but we see mahajans especially bhishma pitamaha right from the birth he has been going through only difficulties only sacrifices okay so it is very hard to follow mahajan like bhishma pitama <laughs> and incur only difficulties okay so how do we interpret this because we don't want difficulties <laughs> <laughs> you know that's a wonderful question prabhu ji and uh, thank you for that i know a lot of people have have that on their mind and this is an often asked question in the connection of bhishma dev remember bhishma dev's suffering is on the surface and everything and and his instruction to us essentially is that a devotee is happy to take on what appears to be suffering 
as long as it is in the service of Krishna, how many times we've heard, you know, that a devotee says, Bhakti Vinod Thakur in his prayer says that I don't care whether I go to the heavenly planets, go to hell. As long as I am in the house of a Vaishnava or as long as I'm in the devote, in the company of devotees or as long as I can always associate with the Supreme Lord. So Bhishma Dev demonstrated to us through his sufferings this principle that one, the sufferings that the devotee is undergoing is not because of his or her karma. Now, this is the pure, pure devotee, a person like me, for example. I mean, we get the reactions of our karma. But Bhishma Dev, the Pandavas, they all went through suffering. But they, this was, and, and as Bhishma Dev explained, this is only due to the influence of time. Krishna, in the form of time, is taking the devotee through these circumstances. One, to increase the reciprocation between the Lord and the devotee, like Kunti Devi says in her prayers that Krishna, whenever we've been in difficulty, we think about you. When we are not in difficulty, we don't think about you. So, so please keep us in difficulties always. That's an amazing prayer by Kunti Devi. Bhishma Dev actually exemplifies that principle. He never shunned any suffering because he knew that the purpose, the mission that he had come for was to establish, uh, see, like we said, dharma samsthapanataya sammavami yugevi, to establish a righteous king on the throne. Now, Bhishma Dev could have himself been that king, but he said, no, we want the Pandavas to be those kings. So whatever it takes for me to fulfill this mission of the Lord, I will do it. Same thing Prabhupada did. Prabhupada wanted to fulfill the mission that his guru had given him, which is basically Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission of, uh, of spreading the holy name across the planet. So Prabhupada undertook sufferings. He suffered a heart attack, he suffered two heart attacks, he suffered stroke, he had illnesses, all kinds of things. At the age of six, at the age of 70, he left uh, Vrindavan and came over to the US. I mean, one basic thing that anybody thinks of when they come to the US is what about health, health insurance? What would we do with health insurance? What would we do if we fall sick? Prabhupada didn't think of any of that. It's, it, it's amazing. It is amazing. Now, again, you said we should follow the Mahajans, which is true. Again, Anus, uh, Anukaran, Anusman, we can only follow, but we cannot imitate. So we cannot do what Prabhupada did. At the age of 70, we wouldn't like venture out and do what Prabhupada did. I don't think we'll be capable of doing that. Same way, the kind of sufferings that Bhishma Dev could take, take, take on, we cannot take on. But the principles that we follow, the principles that they taught, and the basic thing is just chant the holy names of the Lord, engage in devotion service, become successful in your battle against birth, death, old age, and disease. So in short, probably to answer your question, as a pure devotee of the Lord, as a servant of the Lord, Bhishma Dev was dedicated to doing whatever it took to please the Lord and to fulfill the Lord's mission. And the mission at that time was for Krishna wanted to establish the partners on the throne and Bhishma Dev said, I will do whatever it takes, whether it causes suffering or not, but I will be faithful to the Lord and perform the mission. Same way Haridas Thakur, his mission was to establish chanting, the supremacy of chanting the holy name. He would chant 300,000 rounds before even eating anything. I don't know what he ate and how much he slept. So that appears like suffering to us, but the devotee is enjoying the ecstasy of devotional service in his exchange with the Lord in what apparently appears to us as suffering. I hope that uh, helps answer your question a little bit, Prabhu. Yes, Prabhu. Thank you very much. So bottom line is, whatever happens, it's at Krishna's will. So, uh, yeah, that's what I understood. Yeah. It's Krishna's will and the devotee is consciously take, taking, on dif taking on difficulties to please the Lord. He doesn't care, care about his selfish interest. Sure, Prabhu. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Guru. Uh, we have one more question from Parima Mataji. Mataji, please go ahead. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Danvat Pranams to you. Prabhuji, thank, you. thank you so much for the wonderful class, Prabhuji. I just had this 
I don't know if I should call it a personal reflection, but when it comes to uh, basically loyalty, loyalty to a person and loyalty to dharma and truth, I think the choice that we should be making is loyalty to truth, even if that means like compromising with loyalty to a person. So what do you have to say to that? Was he setting that example? And what do you say about his silence when Draupadi was being disrobed? Because that has been considered to be a very, very grave sin as, as some people look at it on his part. So that is what I would see clarification on Prabhuji. Excellent question, Mataji. Uh, thank you for that. And you know, uh, these are relevant uh, observations. And Krishna actually says, and Prabhupada is explained in his purports, that because Bhishma Dev was quiet during the disrobing of uh, Draupadi, he and Dronacharya, they were both quiet and they deserve to be killed for that offense. That is why the Mahabharata was won by the Pandavas and not by the Kauravas. So indeed, indeed, we have to take the side of uh, truth and not the person. And the loyalty to the person can be left aside in the interest of loyalty to truth. In Bhishma Dev's case, he has actually exemplified this principle. The thing to understand, Madhaji, is that look at how great a devotee Bhishma Dev was, that he was prepared, he was prepared to go down in history as the person who kept quiet when Draupadi was being disrobed. He put himself in that position just to serve the Lord. So just was like so yes. was it a kind of an agreement with the Lord that, you know, I'll just... Okay. It is entirely an agreement with the Lord. Everything that Bhishma Dev did was in agreement with the Lord. He did nothing on his own. It was only to please the Lord. This was Krishna's plan. That's why he told Yudhishthira Maharaj. He said, all of this has happened due to the influence of Krishna in the form of time. This is the Lord's plan. Not even Shivji, not even Brahmaji. Nobody can understand the Lord's plan. When we say that nobody can understand the Lord's plan, what it implies is that what appears to be counter to our logic, even that Krishna is able to do. And so see how Krishna is so merciful with his devotees because Bhishma Dev made this sacrifice. Bhishma Dev said, my reputation can go down the drain. I don't care. The Lord should be pleased. And the Lord then reciprocated with him and the Lord did the same thing. Krishna said, my reputation can go down the drain. I will break my promise. People can say, Are, what kind of God is this? He makes a promise and he breaks his promise. I'll break my promise. But Bhishma Dev, I will reciprocate with you. I will do what you want me to do. You said that you'll make me pick up a weapon. Yes, I will pick up a weapon. So see, this is the extreme level of reciprocation between the Lord and his devotees. Yes. But the lesson to us as common people is very clear. We should not as Mahabharata says, we should not gamble. It will lead to problems. We should not take the side of the wrong person. We should take the side of truth. Bhishma Dev could do it. Shivji can drink poison. We cannot drink poison. Bhishma Dev can take the side of the Kauravs. We should not do that. Yes. I yes, hope that helps explain. Yes, Prabhuji, yes, that did, that does explain. And, and there's, I mean, I don't know if I should say one more thing, Prabhuji. He gave up his throne basically for the sense gratification of his father. It's not that he gave up the throne for a higher purpose. Actually, he was from a higher lineage. He was Ganga Putra, very, very qualified person. He would have given birth to a very qualified lineage rather than having the Dhritarashtra in his lineage. So this is like one more thing that always comes to my mind that he put the kingdom of Hastinapur at stake for his father's sense gratification. I'm sorry. I don't know if I'm saying something wrong, but that thing came to my mind whenever I read that pastime. 
No, Matani, so, that is actually that is a longer story, and we can get into that yes, later. Yes. Okay. Not yeah. a problem, Prabhuji. All yeah, right. Thank you so much. But yeah, but it was not sense gratification on Maharaj Shantanu's part. There is actually a longer story for why Shantanu Maharaj appeared as Shantanu Maharaj and Ganga Devi, and it's related to the oh, heavenly planets and their. All right, Prabhuji. <laughs> All right. We'll delve into that some other time. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Welcome. Hare Krishna. Thank Hare you Krishna. so much. Uh, thank you, Mataji, for your uh, very nice and even challenging question. <laughs> you know, sometimes we need to challenge ourselves when it comes to even scripture so that we can uh, make sense of what uh, the scripture is trying to tell us as well and so that it can convince us even further. So, Prabhu, uh, I think we are, uh, I think uh, we don't have any other questions, so let's close out uh, the session. But we want to thank you so much for your wonderful uh, session today and uh, we look forward to hearing from you uh, more and more Prabhu. thank you Prabhu. thank you so much Prabhuji. thank Are you Prabhu. so much Prabhuji. thank you Prabhu. thank you Prabhu. we just have a few announcements before uh, everyone can drop off uh, so please just stay on for a minute so as Prabhu was talking about that is to say Krishna taking uh, the chariot wheel and attacking Bhishma Dev because Bhishma Dev gave his word and he was in worried about his own promise that he had kept. So that's whom we discussed today. And next week we have the next Mahajan who is Sukadev Goswami. And the speaker for next week is uh, His Grace Amarendra Prabhu. As usual, the timing of the class is 7 p.m. So please join us next week. Also on Sundays, we are having Kirtans at the temple starting at 6 p.m. And we request all of, us, all of you all to join us. We have uh, an amazing Kirtan team now of uh, youth devotees, but we are always looking for more and more people to come and join us and uh, take the joy of Kirtan and uh, relish in the glory of the holy name also upcoming festivals so this week is pretty light uh, also i think it is the navaratri day which is starting today which obviously concludes with the ramachandra vijayotsava which is on the 15th of october and the same day is also the appearance day of sri madhvacharya on the 16th is pashankusha ekadashi on the 17th, we have the Disciplines Day of many wonderful devotees in our wonderful Gaudiya Vaishnava tradition. Sri Raghunath Dasa Goswami, Sri Raghunath Bhatta Goswami, and Sri Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami. And October 21st is another very important and auspicious month, which is the Damodara month or the Karthika month. So more announcements uh, will be uh, coming soon regarding those programs. We have some amazing lineups. Uh, for these uh, for this auspicious month so please stay tuned as all of you know you can stay tuned to our social media pages for updates on different programs be it the website facebook instagram youtube and whatsapp all with a single click on our link tree page so please go and check it out if you aren't following us on any of these platforms already also we want to request prayers for some of the devotees who are having a little difficulty. Uh, I think we don't have a few names mentioned here, uh, but I'll start off with uh, His Holiness Jabtak Maharaj, His Holiness Amala Bhakta Swami, Our Grace Govardhan Leela Mataji, Our Grace Uttama Radhika Mataji, His Grace Sham Govinda Prabhu and his family. Also, uh, we have Karthik Kripa Prabhu who's also been a little sick, uh, who usually manages the program today. So we request prayers for him as well. Doctors who have helped fight COVID, and also those who we haven't been able to mention today. So let's chant the Hare Krishna Mahamantra three times. Um, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 
कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो वंस अगेन वी थैंक ऑल ऑफ यू फॉर जॉइनिंग अस ऑन दिस मिड वीक प्रोग्राम एंड प्लीज जॉइन अस नेक्स्ट वीक एंड आल्सो फॉर द संडे प्रोग्राम वी विल सेंड आउट अपडेट्स रिगार्डिंग द स्पीकर एंड द टॉपिक सो वी थैंक यू ऑल वंस अगेन हरे कृष्ण